Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Does your computer have an AMD FX CPU based on the bulldozer microarchitecture? Are you interested in getting another year or two out of it before upgrading while still being able to play the newest games? You've come to the right place. This is my AMD FX 8300 test PC that I built right here on the channel in February of 2017, just a few weeks before the launch of Ryzen 7 1700. First, before I get into this video, I want to reassure any viewers who have an FX-based PC that I am not making this to tell them how horrible their PC is, how slow it is, and how useless it is. Rest assured, I do have some good things to say along with the bad. The goal here is to show you what is possible, so please stick with me to the game footage. A small preview. The Division 2 runs amazing on this PC. Here, you can see me in combat, fighting multiple enemies. The game was responsive, easy to control, played great, no problems. This is a detailed open-world first-person shooter that you could absolutely play start to finish on this machine. Now, the Division 2 does have a built-in benchmark, but I played a real mission to get a feel for how responsive and controllable the game really was. Did my character respond to keyboard inputs quickly? Did she fire as soon as I clicked the mouse button? And was it easy to play? The answer is a resounding yes to all of the above. Now, not all games run that well, but I'm putting this up front so that as I tell you the truth about the FX in 2020, you don't all click away thinking I don't have anything nice to say. Speaking of nice things to say, if my choice in 2020 was between an i5 2500K and an FX 8300, I'd take the FX 8300 without question, so there is that to consider. In 2017, I built this machine to have a reference computer to compare against the new Ryzen CPUs that were launching at that time and to broaden my experience with AMD CPUs in general, which I had not personally previously used since 2005 with the Athlon 64X2 4400 Plus being the last one that I personally used before switching to a Core 2 Duo E6600 in late 2006. A link to the full playlist of 18 videos on this PC will be down in the video description below. If you'd like to see a detailed build video, a very long benchmark video, and some detailed gameplay videos on this machine, please check that out. This video today is the tale of two stories. On one hand, we have a CPU that was counted out a long time ago among enthusiasts, a CPU that was easily beaten in tests eight years ago by the i7-2600K. It wasn't even worth considering four years ago versus an i7-7700K, and frankly today isn't even part of the conversation, at least among enthusiasts. On the other hand, we have a survivor, a CPU that was counted out but it isn't out of the game just yet. The FX line has aged amazingly well in terms of playability, smoothness, and value given its discounted price versus Intel over the years. As the saying goes, one person's junk is another person's treasure. So allow me to get the TLDR out of the way right now. If you can afford an upgrade, it is time. Any value left in the FX line is there only for people who simply don't have the means to upgrade. No offense is intended there. Everyone has different financial situations and I understand that. But the blunt honest truth is the only people who should be running this are those who can't afford to upgrade. In short, it's terrible versus even a first generation Ryzen 7 1700, much less a Ryzen 7 3700X, which wipes the floor with it in every way possible. This does not mean that it does not function, does not work, and it will not run any software. That's not true. Actually, it's remarkable how well it really does work, all things considered. I am not making this video to tell you to throw out a working PC if you have one. The point is to find out how far this machine can be stretched with a new video card running modern games in 2020. 
we are running the latest version of Windows 10 2004 with all of the updates installed. The AMD chipset drivers are installed and the newest NVIDIA graphics drivers are installed. We have a fixed CPU overclock of 4 GHz, which brings this more in line with an FX 8350 at stock speeds versus the 8300, which is slower. We have 16 GB of DDR3, 1600 CL11 installed, and all of the games were installed on SSDs, including the Samsung 860 EVO here, to remove any hard drive latency from the results. MSI Afterburner was used to provide real-time performance in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and all the footage was captured on an external hardware capture card on a second computer, so no performance was lost to get the footage you're seeing. Before we get to the game footage, let me offer a few thoughts on the general Windows desktop performance on this computer. In short, it's bad. It's frankly terrible relative to anything more modern opening Chrome, opening a few browser tabs, playing YouTube videos, waiting for the videos to load, running updates, waiting for games to patch, waiting for levels within games to load, waiting for everything if you're doing more than one thing at a time. Yeah, if that sounds repetitive, well, it is. Everything about the Windows desktop experience is awful. Now, if this is your only computer experience and you haven't used anything newer, then you have nothing to compare it to and you may think that's just how computers work. However, Next to this, when I was testing it, is my video capture PC, which runs a Ryzen 5 3600 6 core 12 thread Zen 2 CPU at 4 gigahertz. And the difference in Windows desktop performance is so large, it's hard to imagine just a few short years separate these two CPUs. You really must use it to feel it. The little micro delays between a mouse click and things happening, the quarter second pause here, the slow window opening there. That's why I'm not showing you side-by-side -side footage of this PC and a more modern one opening windows and opening web pages and watching videos is because passively watching a video such as this YouTube video does not convey how truly awful the Windows desktop experience is versus a modern one because it's not an interactive experience. You're just, you're just watching it as opposed to doing it. So you'll have to take my word for it that if general Windows use is your thing, a more modern architecture really does make a noticeable difference. Let's move on to games, which as I noted before, aren't all awful. The first game I want to show you is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, a game that will run on the FX CPU, if not at top levels of performance. The frame time graph is at least smooth, however I want to draw your attention to the GPU usage in the upper left hand corner. Our GTX 1660 is being bottlenecked at 1080p high detail by the FX 8300 at 4GHz. The frame rate is decent enough, but it will fall in busy areas of the game. Borderlands 3 is a rather demanding game using all of the graphics card we have and about half of the CPU power. Frame rates are smooth, but whoa, look at that main system RAM usage. 16 gigabytes is getting long in the tooth. 24 or 32 gigabytes of RAM would help in games like this. Far Cry New Dawn presents an interesting challenge. The benchmark only uses four threads. This is fairly consistent across CPUs. However, look at the GPU usage. We are being severely bottlenecked by the CPU's lack of performance, at times only using half of what the GTX 1660 offers. Next up, we have Fortnite. This game runs on everything, right? Don't be so sure. A lot has been added to this game in the past year and it has become much more demanding to run. I saw GPU usage drop to 50% at times as the CPU was a severe bottleneck. Frame time spiked and provided uneven gameplay, and frankly this one surprised me, as I expected Fortnite to run smoothly without complaint. However, I found it difficult to control at times, with lag spikes preventing me from aiming accurately, I missed jumps, and generally it was harder to play than it should have been. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is about as far from Fortnite as you can get, yet it runs remarkably smoothly for what it is. It's not as nice as The Division 2, however, it is playable enough. I wouldn't advise player versus player in either game, but in the solo single player game, you can adapt to it and it works well enough. 
Adjusting the detail down won't help given that we're already CPU bottlenecked at 1080p high detail like most of these games so far. Returning to the Division 2 which we showed at the start of the video, I wanted to show you a different section of the game. I ended up playing for about 20 minutes in one of the end game repeatable battles with lots of enemies at various points and it was completely controllable throughout. To be sure, it's smoother and better on a newer CPU, but I would call this 100% playable outside of PvP. Overwatch is 100% playable here. I did a competitive battle with three rounds and had no issues controlling during both the attacking and defending modes. Unlike Fortnite, this had no control input lag, no slow responsiveness, and no detectable stutter. We remain very CPU bottlenecked, however, even with that limit, our frame rate was very high at 1080p high detail, and yes, I did verify the render resolution was set to 100%, since that likes to auto-adjust itself when you change graphics cards. Shadow of the Tomb Raider might appear playable at first. However, if you look at the CPU usage combined with the frame time graph, it really isn't. You'll get all kinds of micro stutters input lag spikes, and uneven gameplay in a game that requires precision timing for all the jumping, moving, and shooting that needs to happen. Technically it runs, but I wouldn't consider this to be a good experience. Wolfenstein Youngblood runs fine. This game is fairly well optimized and uses both the CPU and GPU effectively, at least in the game's built-in benchmark. World War Z also runs nicely, also using the combined system resources effectively. There are lots and lots of games like this that look good enough and will perform well enough for most people using a modern 200R graphics card. Finally, that brings us to World of Tanks and World of Warships. Both games run very well on this level of hardware, which makes sense given they are free to play and Wargaming wants them to run on a wide variety of hardware to attract as many possible customers as they can. Having said that, the same logic could be applied to Fortnite and it was, in a word, terrible. So it's often true, but not always. I ran the World of Tanks RT Encore benchmark, but I played a live game of World of Warships, and other than high detail missing anti-aliasing, which I personally would turn on, it ran lovely and looked fine. The game is actually limited to 75 frames per second normally, but you can turn that off in the engine config file, which is what I did here. So set the detail to maybe very high on a card like this, and it'll run at 75 frames per second most of the time. Here you can see a single chart with all of the average and all of the 1% low numbers in one place. If you want to see how well all of these games play, at least as it comes to benchmark charts, then you've come to the right place. However, we include the footage of all the games so that you can see how they actually run with CPU and GPU usage, VRAM usage, and main system RAM usage, because I think that's far more informative than just looking at a chart. So what do I think of this PC in 2020? I said at the start, this is the tale of two stories. If you have any other option, this CPU is terrible. It is slow, it stutters in places, has horrible Windows desktop performance, and it should be replaced by anyone who has the means to do so. On the other hand, if the option is no computer at all, or an FX8300, then I think this is a wonderful CPU that will run modern software at least reasonably well. With the addition of an SSD and a modern GPU, even a budget one, you can play almost any game with modest compromises. I do want to be clear, the days of being able to do that are rapidly coming to an end. While World of Tanks will probably continue to run on this for five years because free to play is a thing, new games coming out such as Cyberpunk 2077, Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and more will probably not run well at all. This very much is at the end of its useful life going forward from here, other than running older games, of course. However, to upgrade to Ryzen, you need a new CPU, a new motherboard, new system RAM, perhaps a new CPU cooler, maybe a new SSD. You might as well get a whole new computer at that point and keep your FX running as a built machine perhaps a backup computer. You could also give it a second life as a Plex server, running Linux, or a cheap network storage box. Being old and obsolete doesn't mean that you have to just throw it away. It just means that it's time to find a second life for it. 
Perhaps you know somebody who doesn't have a computer at all. Your old FX machine may be slow today, but to someone who is without, it's awesome and can provide years of enjoyment to somebody new. Thank you all so much for watching this rather long video. Two gold stars to everyone who is still here. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to the channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where the comment section is. Links in the video description, links to my very long 18 video playlist on this computer, now 19 with this, links to, well, probably not FX8300 based PCs, but I might link it to eBay because if you are on an extreme budget or wanting to put together a second PC, if you can find an FX8300 and a cheap 970 motherboard on eBay for say $50 for both the motherboard and CPU, preferably with the RAM included, that might be an interesting option to consider for a backup PC or a kid's PC or just, you know, if your other option is no computer at all. In reality, Ryzen exists, and so everybody with any means whatsoever should really be buying at least like a Ryzen 5 3600 ideally, but you may be able to find Ryzen 5 1600s or Ryzen 7 1700s for very cheap. I will link those below as well. They are far more capable than this thing is. Thank you all so very much for watching. I will see all of you next time.